Hello, everybody, and welcome to No Sleep Till Midnight. I'm your friend, Gabriel, and I'm joined by my friends, James. Oh, sorry. I'm trying trying to look up Miku Beat Beat. Sorry. (laughs) I just... I need to see this, but okay, keep going. Dude, I put the I put it in the chat. Just click I the link. I was taking forever. Okay. Jesus <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> I'm Kristen. Hey. Uh, Noah. Uh, hi. And Reese. Yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show, everybody. How's it going? I wait. I just want to say. Oh, it's going pretty good. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I would just love if people, if, if for some reason people didn't understand what Reese actually sounded like. And so like after that noise, you're like, wait, who is this other guy talking? <laughs> <laughs> Reese talks like a zombie throughout the whole episode. I love it. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> but Sorry, Reese. I caught you. How, how are you doing, Reese? I said I was oh, good. That was it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing pretty good. I'm a simple man, I'm pretty James. happy. I actually have some pretty cool news Ooh. to oh. share. What is your news? Um, yeah, so I don't think I've had the chance to talk about it on the podcast, but I'm way too happy about it not to share it. But um, it, you guys already know this, but the audience probably doesn't. But I uh, participate in a crew battle league for Ferris, our college. And we finally won our first crew battle, uh, second to last week. Hey, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Still, congrats. I popped off so fucking hard, <laughs> like nice. you don't even know. Nice, um, well done. You yeah, gotta tell uh, everyone just, who you mean. Uh, Joker, like the edgy boy I am. The edgy yes. boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says a lot about society. Yes. We certainly do um, live in one. We live in a society. Yes. Return to monkey. Yes. <laughs> Monk. Oh my god, did you guys see um, the... Zack Snyder's Justice League cut trailer came out like a week or so ago. Hot take, it's going to be shit. <laughs> Probably, but they had the Joker in it and he oh, no. said he said the we live in the a society line and like that's Which the, Joker? The Jared Leto's Joker. Ew. Yeah. So, but he he did like we live in a society that loves to do that. I don't remember the line, but it was like Oh my god, he said the line. He, guys, he said the line. He said, it. He said the thing. He said the thing. Yes. He's a meme now. I, I'm crying. I think Jared Leto is just trying to get back into uh, the limelight. I, sorry, I was listening to that too. I'm just, I'm crying. <laughs> this, this video uh, yeah. just yeah. hurt my brain. Wait, wait, you you watched yeah. it during that entire thing? I did, thing? I'm sorry. I just, I really needed to see. <laughs> and it god. just... I'm crying because okay, I'm listening James, to you guys talk explain the video in the background. Like, first impressions. I'm just I'm first listening impressions. to you guys talk, and in the background of it, all I hear is just it's just. <laughs> and then the table just starts going crazy. It's oh my god. James been watching uh, hentai in the middle. Of I, the it's, it's it's pretty close. I mean, you know, nothing's shown. I said it was borderline. No, I know. I haven't finished. I'm only at a minute, and I think it gets louder. But I'm James gonna stop. James hasn't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, James takes too long. Yeah, but nice if guys finished last. Me. Am I right? Well, three whole seconds. Am I right, guys? <laughs> yeah. Hey, give me give me some props. It's like three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you know that half a second is really what gets them going. It brings them. Have you guys back. heard of the song called Three Minutes of Ecstasy"? Maybe. No. no. It's a song about having sex for only three minutes, <laughs> but it's like the best fucking three minutes of yeah, your life. That's great. <laughs> but it, so, anyways, uh, Jared Leto—they're they're bringing him back for Snyder Cut. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that alone just shows how shit. Oh it's yeah, gonna be. absolutely. I think it's supposed to be like four or five hours. Too. Gross! I can't. Ew. I'm still gonna watch it because now I'm curious. Yeah. But like, I might just I'm watch not. it and just skip all the parts that I know were already in the movie because those parts were not good. I feel like supporting uh, the Snyder Cut is like supporting game, like unfinished games, 
just so then they can release it as free DLC later. Oh, that's a really uh, good. That's a really. I, I think that's kind of a good I, take on it. I think it's more like what happened with Blade Runner, to be honest. Because what happened with Blade Runner? The original cut of theatrical cut of Blade Runner was not the cut that um, oh, what's his name, Ridley Scott had made. So there's actually three cuts out there. Right. There's the theatrical cut, the uh, director's cut. director's cut, and then I think there's a newer cut. But like mm-hmm. the reason, like why, like we had the Snyder cut is because his. I think his daughter died or had, was really sick in the middle of filming and he couldn't finish filming. So Joss Whedon came in and finished filming, but also did extensive reshoots oh. and changed, changed the story a lot. Is that so what happened? Snyder, yeah. That's why we have the the weird like mustache removal yeah. from uh, Superman was because... That was during a reshoot, not the actual film. Right. I did know that. I knew there was a, a lot yeah. of reshoots. I didn't know it was for that reason. I didn't. Yeah. I guess I didn't even really so, think about that. I don't like Josh Whedon. So, Josh Whedon. So. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. Like he's made some good hits, but like apparently it's come out recently that he's been he's kind of an asshole. Yeah, I saw that too. Kind of misogynistic. Doctor Holbert was sing along blog, top notch movie. Yes. Is that even a movie though? It's like forty five minutes. It's like it's like a short movie, film, I guess. Intense. But still, it's I think it's directed by Joss Whedon. Yep, had, I did uh, a report Neil Patrick on Harris it. in it. Man, yeah. I remember when that came out. I wasn't like I wasn't like middle school when that came out. Yeah, it uh, premiered on YouTube. Yep, I remember that. Just a little baby mm-hmm. Gabu, little baby Gabu, yeah. and and uh, fun baby fact. Jerry, <laughs> <laughs> baby Jerry. Fun fact about that movie with me though is that. Um, Instead of uh, doing what I was supposed to do in a uh, youth group, like for church, I would just goof off and watch that movie with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Little devil child from the start. That's great. Feel. Little edgy boy. <laughs> in the immortal words of Reese, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Reese, I forgot. You were here? <laughs> Pray this in a way. Reese? Oh. Oh, he actually isn't here. Uh, hello? <laughs> he actually isn't Milton? here. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke, but... Reese? Maybe he's watching the Miko Maybe. video. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he's been... oh, wait. Death Sorry, I was, I was talking to the gamer wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he lives. Just Reese's little flex on us for a second. Be like, yeah, I got a gamer wife. Uh, Sorry, I had to talk to her. Right. I had to give no, her some no, extensive just, uh, three seconds of sex. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, I was I was sexing for like three seconds. I'm back now though. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and let's just say I enjoyed it. She, I don't know. <laughs> nice. Yep, thanks, yeah. thanks everyone for the. Thank, yep, yep, you're welcome. The vote of confidence on that joke. Let's keep going. Uh-huh. Golf claps all around. <laughs> so, <laughs> ha, ha, so ha, ha. Uh, speaking of that. Um, did you guys hear about the the new Joker being in the um, the new Zack Snyder cut? The new Joker in the oh, you suck! I know exactly what you just did. <laughs> you really oh, speaking of that, I let's talk about you. Deja Vu. See, that was I hate you. <laughs> see that, yeah, that was such it was such a good and bad segue that I hated. Worst it. segue ever. Uh, <laughs> I just Twitter. got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say him. that it wasn't deja vu for me because I didn't have fapping noises in the background of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just make your own, bro? Oh. Isn't that what the cool kids are doing nowadays? <laughs> just, just during the podcast. <laughs> it's like, ha ha, I'm making funny noises. <laughs> oh, it's actually just the real thing. Next Gabe and James show. It's just us in the corner. <laughs> Next Gabe and James. <laughs> Playing soggy yeah. cookie. Stay Furiously tuned. masturbating in the yeah. corner. <laughs> Isn't that what the way. big old bear was doing in, in the episode? Yeah. Bear. What? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in, the basement. in the unreleased episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not oh. out yet. Oh, we, recorded, we recorded a sequel to Gabe and James. Stay tuned. Editor, beep all that out. Spoiler alert. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So, déjà vu. 
<laughs> I've been in this place so, before. So, deja vu. Okay, do you guys get deja vu? Because I get yes. it a lot. I do too. I get yes. it very intense. Like, um, yeah. I don't. Know, I don't know if anyone else wanted to start, but I just like when I get deja vu. It honestly takes up about fifteen minutes of my day just to like try and figure out what's going on. Um, because I'll be able to whenever I get it. I'll be in a situation that like I'll be able to remember that exact same situation and then like the worst part is that as people react to it or as, as I react to it it makes it even worse like I'm like wait this is exactly how I reacted or that person reacted the last time like this this start like and then like just the the more things go on the more it's just like yep this happened before too like I don't know yeah. I couldn't I, I no I definitely feel that yeah like whole entire sequences versus just like in the past, there was one time that I remember specifically, like, oh, I'm, I thought it was a dream. I think it might have honestly been a dream. It was weird. I don't mm. know. Because I was, like, predicting that something was going to happen. And then it was, like, two years later, not until I met my roommate, that this thing happened. Uh-huh. And I was, like, sitting on a boat. And then this, like, really random red jet ski drives by. It's so simple. And it totally could have happened before. But I just remember thinking, oh, this is going to happen. And then, like you said... Then she said something, and then this happened, then this happened. It was like a whole sequence versus right. just like a specific moment. Very weird. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of how, how it is for me, too. Like, I'll get... It's mostly like I felt like I've dreamed it before. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like I don't often get the deja vu where it's like I felt like I've lived this before. It's always yeah. like I feel like this has been a dream. Because, um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like, like, go, like bringing back Mormonism again. Um, one of the uh, things that is talked about is like everyone has like spiritual gifts. So like the gift of tongues kind of stuff. And one that gets talked about as a kid was like the gift of prophecy. So as a kid, cause I experienced deja vu so much. I was like, maybe I'm a prophet, <laughs> 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 you know? Cause like, I felt like I kept dreaming things and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, you might have the gift of prophecy, but you know I got the gift of tongues. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for that, James. You're welcome. Real talk, though. Like, what if prophets were prophets just because they had deja vu a lot? Maybe. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Um, The very first time that I had deja vu, I still remember it clearly. Um... It was way back when I was like a small Small. child. Um, I dreamed, like I specifically like remember dreaming of uh, being on the tire swing with a couple of my cousins. And then um, literally like months later, um, the same exact thing like happened, like bit for bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, it was the same thing recently because earlier this week uh, when I was dog sitting, um... Like I could have swore that like a month or two ago, um, after I had like agreed to dog sit, um, like I had deja vu where I was sitting on the couch with one of my best friends I had over. Um, it was like the last like full day that I was there Mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. We're watching, um, anime on the uh, living room TV, uh, one of the dogs laying down. And then I remember like reaching up to grab the remote for the TV with one of the dogs hopping up onto the couch at the same exact time. And that's like the exact moment that I had deja vu is just for like a split second. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Like sometimes, like I said before, like I dream it and it's like a whole sequence. But then again, sometimes it's just like, oh, this has happened before. And it's just like a second. But it's still that weird feeling, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Reese? Do you get deja vu? Uh well, funny you mentioned that, and it's funny you were talking about dreams earlier, because I feel like I can't really recall any specific deja vu instances I've had. However, I have, like, dreamed of things, and then they've... Mostly locations. Like, they've come true. Uh-huh. I can recall... Like, I had never been to... um, It was some ice rink out in the east side of the state. Like, I had never been to, like, the specific one that I was going to back in my youth hockey days and I had a I had a dream one time and it was like that exact rink and then I, I showed up to the rink like you know whenever I played there I was like don't I remember this from somewhere like, there's, there's no shot I, I dreamed this 
Sorry. I like that little Reese has like a somewhat British accent. <laughs> what? I don't, what do you mean? don't I remember this from somewhere. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> Close your mouth. Don't speak. Um, but I feel like I do that with locations on, from time to time. Maybe you're like... Because uh, I used to... Maybe you have like one of those powers that uh, all the astrology Twitter girls talk about where it's like you're manifesting it. <laughs> Can't help being an asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm a Capri yeah. Sun doesn't mean you can act like that. Yeah. Towards me. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. I identify as an Apache helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You can't so you identify guys... as different astrology. You're born with it. <laughs> born so from like, it, molded by <laughs> it. Do you think that? deja vu happening like means something like we've lived this like before or reset in the matrix or i think what? it's i think yeah. it's just my brain having a stroke <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> honestly like i have like two very different thoughts about that i i definitely i don't <clears throat> i don't know a lot of the science behind it but i feel like it's definitely some sort of dissociative event or like mm. maybe your brain just checks out for just like a quick second because it's pretty common for people to get, have little moments of dissociation. Mm-hmm. Um, and by dissociation, I, that's what it means to like, just like kind of like an out of body experience. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. That we interpret it as like, Oh, we've seen this before. And the other like idea I have is a little more, I don't know, like, like maybe it's something about like the collective unconscious or whatnot that we're tapping into. Ooh. You know, that sounds mm-hmm. pretty fancy. Yeah. Fancy like, schmancy. What do you guys think about the collective unconscious? The hive mind? Not necessarily um, hive mind, but like it's almost like almost like a instinct thing, but like a lot of people think that's where like where like um you see aliens or like cryptids because it's like I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's just the like collective well, whatever the, the case, I'm not contributing to it very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think um, it's because, I mean, it's kind of like uh, like the theory that, you know, brain waves kind of act on the, like a frequency, right? So like, you know, when you get into the car and you've been thinking about a song all day or you've been thinking about like a song right before you get in the car and then you get into the car and you're like, oh, this is a song that I was just thinking about, like how everyone kind of like, maybe there's like a frequency that I all like you know resonates through everyone or something like that kind of right yeah yeah it's freaky i wonder if that's why the radio Whack. plays the same songs over and over and over again Probably. people keep thinking about yeah. it <laughs> manifesting i told you literally yeah <laughs> they are manifesting their destiny Twitter astrology that girls really gets into all about manifest that stuff. destiny yeah that really <laughs> gets into west. like um i don't know if you guys Yeehaw. know a whole lot about like left hand right hand or chaos magic um, Only from what I, you've like, told me before. I've yeah. never heard that before. <laughs> what Left brain, what are you so, on about drug boy? Yeah. So like this stuff, like I don't necessarily believe in like that it's magic, magic, but um, it's like doing things to put your will into the universe. But by doing those things, that's how you get it. Like, like I saying, like keep telling yourself. I'm going to get this job. You're going to like naturally guide yourself to doing the things that will help you get that job better. You know, like affirmations are a type of, of like chaos magic really ritual. If you want to talk about like that, Mm -hmm. but like just having, putting your own willpower into the universe and then doing something about that. Does that make sense? My sister's been talking about doing that a lot lately. Like, she's been on, like, this huge, like, spiritual journey thing, um, trying to, like, find herself Mm -hmm. again, um, because she went through, like, a pretty big breakup a few months ago, Mm -hmm. and, um, like, she's much happier because of it, and it's, like, giving her a reason to, like, put more positive energy out in the world, as well as, like, for herself, and, um... Like, I'm not too into it, but she did, like, a tarot card reading for me Mm. uh, last month, 
and it was freaky how accurate mm-hmm. it is and apparently that's how it's been for her each and every single time that she's done yeah that. no they really are i've gotten it done like t- twice and yeah each time i was just like very similar to like the exact same yeah. situation i was in at the time and it's just it, it's uh I, yeah I, I put some some trust in the in some of that like i don't know it, it's just you know as much as people want to make fun of the tri- the Twitter astrology girls, just going to keep shouting them out until one of them hits me up. Uh, <laughs> the, the, I mean, there's there's definitely, I think, a lot of, you know, some sort of base science or something in, that goes into it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Listen, know James, all like... you got to do... <laughs> <Uh-oh>. You go. <laughs> uh, all you, you got to do, James, right? Is you gotta like look up what sign that girl is, and then you look up what sign is compatible with that, <laughs> and then you just say you're that. No, dude, they know your right. chart. They'll figure it out if you tell. If they find yeah. out any information about you, they know your chart exactly. Fake your They'll birthday. know like your sun, your moon. Yeah. They look because you like sun and moon yeah. signs yeah. are sun, moon, and rising. They'll look up your FBI records. And, <laughs> okay, <never mind. laughs> but for real though, um, with the tarot card reading thing, it's not that the cards are vague either. It's like. It's, incredibly specific mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. with like uh feelings of anxiety um or like i guess what you what you're supposed to do like beforehand is like have like a question in your mind or something that you want answered or something that you want guidance for beforehand like before you choose your five cards and like um when i did like my first and only reading it was um like before our internship um after we were done with like our senior uh classes and everything like being unsure about the future and this is like the start of wtfk as well Mm. and um i don't remember the exact cards i remember um one of them being um man i I have it like in my mind but i don't remember the exact name for it but um i knew about it because of my favorite game persona 5 because they have a lot of like tarot card stuff in it um but it was like Oh, it was the fool. It was the fool, um, which is basically like a card that shows up um, at like the very beginning of like a long like learning experience and like growth and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember the specifics, but it fit really well with like the beginning of working on WTFK as well as like the beginning of a professional career and everything like that. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I've had uh, two readings done. One by a friend. One, my sister also does that kind of stuff. So she read mine. Um, uh, I guess last summer before some pretty traumatic event happened to me, and it's kind of crazy how like the outcome and the alignment of those cards were, and how I'm still like dealing with it and stuff. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, another thing with those um, is that after you get a reading done, like you're not supposed to dwell on it. Right. Because um, you're just kind of supposed to let things play out. You're not supposed to intentionally like look mm-hmm. for those things, or like act on certain things just because of your yeah. reading. It's like I mean, it's like and, it's like any um, uh, you know fortune telling movie or anything. It's like if you get your fortune told, then you're going to ha- it's going to come happen if you try <laughs> to stop it or whatever like that. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I've never had tarot card reading done or. But, like, I feel like there has to be something to, there's got to be some, like, scientific or psychological explanation to why it works and why, why it, like, people find a lot of solace in those. Mm-hmm. 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 I, th- I think really it's similar to people. religion. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it gives you something, like... Uh, something to believe in that's like a higher power without being like oh like people like um like old people wrote this from like thousands of years ago or whatever mm-hmm. yeah and it's like that sense of randomness that you can't just make up it too so like that's another thing yeah Gabe, when you're well, talking about a video we should all go get our tarot cards read oh we should Ooh, or we should fun. try to really treat fun. each try to read each other's tarot cards <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> interpretation of it and then we yeah. have someone actually read it for us afterwards i can yeah i fun. can recruit my sister for that if you'd yes. like i'll buy some tarot cards i think about make, it we can just make our own psychotic tarot yeah. cards. <laughs> <laughs> read them to ourselves 
That'd be great. That'd but, be fun. But Gabe, you're talking about right hand and left hand magic. Which one's more powerful? Um, really depends. Because mm. uh, honestly, I think from my dabbling of you know checking these kind of stuff out, I think chaos magic is the most powerful. Um, both all three types are like very dependent on ritual. Yeah. Uh, but I think the right hand path is definitely more knowledge based and less action based. So it really like depends on what you define as power and what you know Well let me what you're trying to get out of it. Well I'm just I'm just gonna say my, my like, right hand's always been way more magical than my left hand. Yeah, I knew that's where you were going. <laughs> I knew that's where you were going. Deep, but I was certified. trying to be contrarian about it. Like, Gabe, so this is like the magic that people study or whatever? Yeah, so like, these, um, so, I don't know if you know, like, this is like Aleister Crowley, um, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm about to say someone's name that you guys are going to know, but if you could, editor, please yeah. bleep this name Beep. out. Yeah, yeah. He is a uh, witch, and he studies magic. And he like his he doesn't celebrate Halloween because that's his like day of um, like worship and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I mean it's it's a different type of celebration. Um, so I could ask him, and then we can because he has his own YouTube channel as well. Um, yeah. Who is this again? I don't know who this person is. He graduated. He was in TDMP. I think two. S- Two semesters before us, you? it was tall year- person, glasses. No, he wasn't very tall. Um, oh no, I, I don't know. We can, dark skin. We, we can talk um, about who he was after the podcast. Yeah, yeah. He's a cool, dude though. Okay, really cool. I just remember I, yeah. every time I sat behind him, he just had he was just looking up Godzilla kaiju's all the time. Like literally, his computer <laughs> was always on the Godzilla uh, Wikipedia page. It was amazing. That's great. Yeah, yeah, so I can reach out to him. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, I think Noah has, speaking of dark and interesting things, I think Noah has a dark and interesting story for us. Is it about hand I magic? do, I do. Yes. Uh, it's actually kind of related to what we've been talking nice. about, surprisingly. Ooh. This wasn't uh, intentional. <laughs> uh, so I wrote up this long-ass paper. Um, Report. Based on... Yeah, based on some research that I did and a story that I discovered way back when we started doing the podcast. Like, it was a little bit after I did my last big story. If this, um, if this paper isn't but, an MLA format with citations, then I don't want to hear it. I don't think you can see it. <laughs> okay. APA. I'll so, anyways, um, just a disclaimer up front that um, the story that I'm about to tell you guys, um, it's pretty cut down um, just to save on time, even though it's still pretty long. Um, But also, um, I wanted to offer some room for discussion and uh, for you viewers out there, because there's more to this story than what I'm going to tell here. Um, I'll give you guys some resources towards the end to go watch and uh, go look into yourself. But, um, Leave a comment on the video. <laughs> yeah, and if you're listening through like Spotify or something, go to our YouTube and maybe discuss some things down in the comments. I think this would be like a really cool discussion to have with also doing more research into it because this is kind of like base level because this is like the main story with this mm. whole thing. Okay, so back in ye olden times of the internet, uh, forums were the popular way to meet new people and converse with people that have similar interests. I'm sure the rest of you here have had some, like, sort of exposure to it. Oh, God, yes. Uh, the <laughs> closest things, the forums nowadays are, like, Reddit and 4chan. <laughs> no. <laughs> I still got to tell my story about 4chan sometime. Editor beep out 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to see my 4chan teller. <laughs> Manifesting negative energy. <laughs> or whatever. Um, however, we're not talking about those websites tonight. Tonight, we're going to explore a forum post on a website called live journal um surprisingly enough that. uh this website is still active really um yeah i looked it up and they like modernized the website and everything oh. but the screenshots of like this initial post are still like really yeah. old 
um, just because the post in question uh, dates all the way back to 2005. Jeez. And for some context for the viewers, um, I had just turned six years old at this point. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, maybe. Um, because be this like post that. was like made in April of 2005. Dang. Um, yeah. So um, this initial post that the story originates from was written by someone. Um, their handle on there was Genki Crack. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But what initially interested me about this story was how it relates to the game Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big JRPG junkie and just a fan of video games in general. Um, but this post wasn't directly about Final Fantasy VII. Rather, real experiences this person has had with members of the fandom. Oh, no. Uh, every fandom has a rotten, toxic, outspoken minority, but this goes way beyond that. Uh, anyways, let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, this poster used to run a popular fan website devoted to Cloud Strife, the protagonist of Final Fantasy VII, and a side character named Zek. Um, he's just one of many side characters from the same game. Um, at this point, our protagonist, uh, Genki Crack, uh, was a college freshman and a very heavy drinker. Um, nice. During this time, uh, he got into contact with someone by the name of Hojo. This is not THE Hojo, the evil scientist from Final Fantasy VII, but a woman going by the same name. Similarly, Hojo ran her own Final Fantasy VII fan website, soon calling our protagonist by the name of Zack, uh, just like one of the characters from this fan website. Uh, just to make things easy, I'm going to refer to him as Zack for the remainder of the story. And that's the, uh, uh, what's it? Grunky pus, whatever. Uh, Genki crack. <laughs> Genki crack. That's, yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's him. Like a banjo Hojo character. Mama. Grunky pus. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sooner or later, uh, Hojo introduced Zach to their wife Jen, or better known as Genova. Uh, Genova is another character from the same game. Um, just to be clear, uh, both Was Hojo. Genova's witness. Yeah, yeah. Um, both Hojo and Genova are antagonists from the game, so if that doesn't set off some red flags, I don't know what does. Um, but, but before I continue, what do the rest of you guys think of the idea of past lives and resurrection? Well, this is kind of going back to the deja vu question because I was, I never really got to this point saying that, like, I don't personally believe in, like, um, like reincarnation, resurrection, like that, that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But also, this is off topic from the, the question you just asked. Yeah. The second you said Hojo, my friend, uh, I'm not going to say her first Your name. Your friend Hojo? Her, inst her no. <laughs> <laughs> um, her last name is Hojara, and she's on Twitter at Hojo26. That was just a weird oh timing. God. Okay, continue. Yeah. So uh, deja vu, am I right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think yeah. for me, like I feel yeah. like I don't believe that there is resurrection or reincarnation, but maybe it has something to do like what we talk about with like the collective unconscious of like maybe what you see as as like maybe memories from a past life could just be this like random brainwave energy that's just been floating around for a while. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. because like energy and matter can't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I just yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I think I, it'd be cool to be like the if if that is what happens, you know, you get reincarnated. I just want to be a butterfly. Yeah. I don't want to be a freaking mosquito or something. Oh, wait, no, that'd be. <laughs> a I can go. Mosquito. I can if I'm a mosquito, I'm gonna find you, Reese. I'm just gonna. Bzz. No. I'm gonna buzz because mosquitoes no. buzz, Kristen. Yeah, yeah, they do. They're That's silent. true. They do. They, they are not noise. silent. No. No. They're <laughs> not. They're really not. Don't Hope you guys have it. some good karma. Yeah. Yeah. Kristen doesn't. <laughs> oh. I'm um, continuing on with okay, the story. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well. Zach was asked a similar question, um, being asked if he had any memories of his past lives. Um, he denied having any memories, but he confirmed that he did believe in the idea. Um, that answer, though, uh, unleashed a bombshell that Zach wasn't prepared for. 
Uh, the one who asked, Jen, proceeded to go on, talking about how parallel universes actually exist, and that potentially there are an alternate reality, or that there is an alternate reality, that um, the events of video games were real. Uh, moreover, that our protagonist, Zack, um, he was Zack from Final Fantasy VII in a past life, and she was convinced. Uh, she continued drawing parallels between him and the character Zack, concluding that they were one and the same. As much as it sounds like some crack shit, which it is, uh, it seemed plausible to our young, drunk college student. <laughs> <laughs> this is 100% real, by the way. Nice. So I'm not making this shit up. I, I will say there's <clears throat> been like, you, I don't know if you ever heard like the theory where it's like, oh, you're in a coma and the whole world is... Uh, it's just like a, a dream that you're in. Like, you know, there'll be like James, wake like, up. Yeah, that James, exactly. Wake yeah, up. that there's James, like there's up. like secret little messages throughout the world that are trying to get you to wake up. And uh one time I was really high and listening I to a podcast how. they talked about that. And then they did exactly that. They're like mm -hmm. they're like they're like, wake up, wake up, like just in the middle of the podcast. And I was like, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So yeah. You love to see it. So I, I understand where he's coming from. I get it. Mm-hmm. Um so anyways, uh, after this, uh, Zach later made plans to meet with Hojo and Genova in State College, Pennsylvania, later that year. Uh, in the dead of winter, he met with Hojo wearing a stereotypical white lab suit, or lab coat, oh, rather, no. um, who brought Zach back to their apartment. As soon as they arrive, Genova comes out of the house in only a purple skirt that rides up above her breasts and begins screaming at Hojo, only to suddenly dismiss it all entirely and at the flip of a switch become what seems to be the nicest person on earth. That's scary. Uh, this yeah. all scares me already. Well, Jen all yeah, Jen Wake wasn't up, just role-playing. Uh, she was what's called a soul bonder. Oh. Um, this is like a niche part of something that's called other kin. But basically, this is a person who grows so attached to a fictional character that they believe they are bonded to them on a spiritual or psychic level. Uh, she'd put on various personalities depending on the situation for her own personal gain. Um, and despite all that, um, Zach continued the visit, <laughs> paying over $300 in busing fees to go back each and every time. Uh, every time that he'd meet more people there, all being soul bonders themselves. So this is like a whole community of people, all centered around Final Fantasy VII characters and soul bonding and whatnot. This poor kid. Oh, I, yeah. Um, I want to make a joke, but I don't know if it's too mean. <laughs> Make a joke. I just, I, I just want to know how bad that house smelled. Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> oh no, we'll get to that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, while Zach was there, Genova would often push for money to buy food, as well as try to make her visitors feel closer to their designated characters on a spiritual level. To assist in this, mm -hmm. Genova and Hojo would LARP. That's live action role playing for those who don't know what that is. Um, they eventually dragged Zack into this, trying to convince him that he could actually do magic while he was only humoring them for their entertainment. Oh, Another thing that they would do was uh, something called past life regression, uh, basically laying on the floor listening to the Final <laughs> Fantasy VII original soundtrack. <laughs> However, <laughs> one of these times, they locked Zack in a soundproof room, asking him if he remembered being Zack. Oh this was to the point where he would basically, like, fucking panic. Like, have a panic attack. That's so horrible. Because they locked him in there for so long. I wish I had a soundproof Yeah, room. same. Honestly, though? That's just, that's just so, like, what that's the so hell? funny, was... but so horrible. Those weirdos can afford one, and I can't. <laughs> yeah. They broke into a college to do it. Oh. <coughs> Because this is like a college town. Go on. Um, upon meeting another soul bonder named Eris, much like the character Aerith from the same game, uh, they tried to push Eris and Zack to sleep together, threatening to lace their food with aphrodisiacs to make it happen. What? However, this never came to fruition. Um, after all those whack shit events, uh, Genova and Hojo asked Zack to move in with them, and against all odds, he agreed. Uh, that summer, Zach moved in, quickly finding a part-time job to pay for groceries, and he ended up quitting drinking altogether. Um, because the writer, which is Zach, um, a.k.a. Uh, Genki Crack, 
Um, <laughs> Because he was soul bonded to Zack the mercenary. Um, it was expected of him to do all the work as opposed to the Queen Genova or the scrawny scientist Hojo. Mm. Everyone quit their jobs while Zack did all the heavy lifting, uh, both in the workplace and at home. So like chores, actually doing heavy lifting, actually going to work, paying for bills, everything. Um, going to get groceries, that kind of stuff. Um, he couldn't even properly use the internet, though, when he was home. Um, this is like dial-up internet days, so like if you're on the phone or if someone else is using the internet, you can't use it. Um, just because uh, Genova, she was on it almost constantly, and whenever he would actually use his PC, um, she would watch him like a hawk whenever he had access to it. Um, also, uh, Genova proceeded to monitor his every move, um, to the point of asking him, like, where are you going? Um, like, who are you talking to on the phone? Who are you texting? Whatever. Um, but she would even wake him up in the middle of the night uh, just to have him run magical errands. Um, on top of all this, the apartment was fucking disgusting. <laughs> I told uh, you. The trash would pile up and fester in the summer heat while Genova would refuse the shower or change clothes, Ew. choosing to wear a single dress that entire summer. <laughs> Uh, to make things even better, uh, Zach had to endure listening to Hojo and Genova beat the shit out of each other behind closed doors, <laughs> followed up by loud, disgusting sex. Jeez. <laughs> Wait a I don't know what these people looked like. I just... Yeah. I don't know yeah, if there's any records of it. Probably not. I just I um, can't believe this. <laughs> this is insane. This is... This is, this is a real no, thing. No, This is a real thing. Um... The combination of starvation, sleep deprivation, social isolation, and monitoring broke Zack down, eventually to the point where he supported them. Um, it got so bad after Eris moved out, she demanded to get some of her things back. Uh, Genova retaliated by screaming at Eris and calling Hojo, threatening to kill herself. Uh, both Hojo and Zack were away from home, both storming back to find Genova pretending to have slit her wrists oh with God. horizontal scratch marks rather than white knife wounds. Um, yeah. Uh, still, Zack was on their side, bashing Eris through emails and blatantly ignoring her, even when she still wanted to be friends with him. <sighs> even though that Zack was left with no confidence to reach out for help, there was still an outside constant, um, yet another soul bonder going by the name of Sid... Uh, another character from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, he still had some sort of grip on reality, um, as he said, like, one foot in reality or whatever, um, occasionally visiting. Um, but as soon as he'd leave, the brainwashing process on Zack would start all over again. It's like they knew that he was actually a little bit sane. Um, this all came to a breaking point, though, when Zack's shoes were stolen out of all things. And that's when he had enough. Grabbing a change of clothes, a pocket knife, a sketchbook, a pencil, and the last of his money, which was $5, by the way, <laughs> um, Zach left shoeless. At that point, Zach had spent two whole months living with Hojo and Genova. Um, after being homeless for a few days, Sid managed to help Zach out and get him to move back home to his mother's house. And that's the story of the Final Fantasy house. That sounds like Soviet psychological torture. Gee, it really Actually, does. Yeah. This, like, yeah. So I watch or listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. Um, one specifically, the last podcast on the left, I'll give them a shout out. Um, they just recently did an episode on a phenomenon known as Folle et Du, which is French <laughs> for um, a madness for two where hmm. people who are really close can like there'd be like a primary person stuck in a like a schizophrenic type of paranoid delusion but that will spread to another person especially mm -hmm. if they're very close i'm wondering oh, if that's okay. a case of fully ado where they just both got lost in the same delusion right it could be it it, it reminds be. me of that's probably cool. yeah. It reminds me a lot. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie The Invitation, um, but it's a it's a, a, like a psychological horror, and it, it's not like specifically exactly like this, but it's um, about this uh, these two characters that have like gone completely just you know uh, like brainwashed into this cult, and they invite a bunch of like their old friends over, which one of them was an ex over to their house for like a get together like oh you know you should all get back together but it's like the whole time it's just 
one like the main character trying to figure out if he's the one being weird or if they're the ones being weird it's just super like this sounds exactly like that where it's just like everyone just kind of like going along with it and you're just there like um no this doesn't seem normal what mm-hmm. was the movie called again the invitation uh, I haven't seen that, but that sounds really familiar. It's really good. I, don't think I, I, I highly recommend it for for everyone. It's yeah. it's very like a very uh, you know low key ho- like psychological horror. Like not you know nothing too crazy goes on that like makes you like Ugh. it's just like very it just the whole time you just feel very cringy because you're just like watching and you're like uh, I, uh, I don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. For those who want to look more into this, because there's a lot more to this. Um. I recommend. I recommend watching the series Down the Rabbit Hole. That's how I found mm-hmm. it. But also, um, I think the original writer um, made like a small like website type thing um, where it like he lists the events and there's a bunch of other sources to other websites and other um, people who have gone through the same thing that knew these people that were a part of this community. Oh, man. And even posts made by Hojo and Genova online, just so then like you can see how actually like insane these two people were. Mm-hmm. And um, there's like a shit ton of sources on that website that leads like down the rabbit hole, if you will. Yeah, is, all about um, this apartment complex. Is that guy still like? Is he still like he's alive today and like doing I well think now? So. I'm just like I just imagine we're gonna like I think look up look it up. This was. Hmm. This was initially posted in 2005, right. so this is about like 15, 16 years ago when it was initially posted. Yeah, I'm just afraid to like look um, it up and like. I think the last time. Oh, I was just say the last time it was updated was 2008. Okay, okay. Interesting. Just look it up and like they, you um, find out they like tried stuffing him inside of like a, a PS1. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, what's really interesting though, like that really is very similar to like a lot how a lot of cults work. Like, they were basically a cult. Yeah, like there. I don't know if it's, it's the brainwashing, but it like there's something to those relationships that make you stay, and it, it's very similar to like like uh, toxic or abusive relationships mm-hmm. where you know people like keep coming back to the same abusive partner and. It's, I don't know, it's, it's really interesting psychologically to me about, about why that happens, but specifically in cults when, like, people are getting hurt and, you know. Tortured. Tortured. Like, there is, a, same podcast, they talked about this cult in um, in uh, Ontario, I believe it was, um, who was led by a guy named Rock Terrio, and it essentially this is like a small small sex cult um and this guy would perform um amateur surgery on his followers when he got drunk and angry which was often um to the point where like people died um there was one woman who he um I won't go into gruesome detail because that not everyone is into that, but he attempted to fix a prolapsed uterus Oh no! in a very, very brutal kind of way. And then later, um, uh, basically cut her arm off in, in increments. Um, but like she didn't even leave even after all that because they were so attached to him being the Messiah Wow, that's, that's just, I yeah. People will do some crazy ass yeah. shit. Wasn't there like a group of people that believes that the like world would end or like aliens are going to show up and pick them up or something? Uh, yeah, Heaven's Gate. Um, that yeah. was I believe nineties in the nineties, early two thousands. This mm-hmm. this was after Waco and Ruby Ridge. Um, but essentially, uh. They were a uh, Marshall Applewhite, which is the leader's name. Um, they believed that they were on Spaceship Earth, and the way to get on the uh, comet, which was their their spaceship, was to commit suicide as a as a group. Yeah, that's why they drank the Kool Aid. Yeah. No, the, uh, that was that was um, 
Jonestown. Oh, oh, yep, you're right, you're right. Yep. <laughs> Jonestown, uh, Jim Jones had a group of nine, over, I think it was 900 and some odd people following oh, him sure. that he forced to drink cyanide-laced uh, flavor aid. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Gabe sure knows his insane yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I have some experience, and it's a very interesting topic to my. To just, me. just think, we're just the start of his next one. Gabe. Yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, you don't want to be part of uh, part of the the uh, Gabble cult? So, uh, <laughs> any listeners out there? I need help. <laughs> To help me out, all you need to do is read off your mom's credit card number <laughs> and the three wacky digits on the back. <laughs> and don't forget the expiration date. Also, and the full the name. the zip code of where you live. <laughs> the name on the card as well. Also, you know, what's, what's her maiden name? You know, well, we just we, we just want to call her by, you know, her proper name, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you trying to stalk these people? Oh, no, I'm just trying to hit on their mom. <laughs> <laughs> James is into cougars confirmed. Oh, yeah. I once spent a whole night at the bar talking to this like forty year old woman. Not that I, not because I thought she was like cute or anything. It's just because uh, she was just telling me about the days of her hitchhiking, and uh, she apparently she was hitchhiking while well, Jeffrey Dahmer was at large. So she was a bad bitch. Oh, <laughs> That's a, that might be yeah. another story. That that was a fun night. Yeah. Story for another yeah. day. That sounds like a story yeah. for another day. But I think it's getting a little late, guys. Mm-hmm. The moon's getting pretty high. Uh, <laughs> moon's getting high. We're getting sleepy. The moon. And so, yeah, make sure to follow us on um, on all the social medias. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. What else are we on, guys? We're on TikTok. Everything. We are on TikTok. Like, we should make a TikTok. Yeah. Twitch. Yeah. yeah, I think we have a TikTok. I don't think we, we do have a TikTok. Have we put anything out on TikTok? I literally just said we I should make we should make a, a new like a TikTok for our TikTok. Yeah, I posted twice to it, so oh, there's you? there's something there. Yeah, nice. Although we don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> also, post down in the comments section if you find anything about the Final Fantasy House. Absolutely, we'd love to love to hear more. And if you if you want to hear more uh, weird and dark stories, uh, I think uh, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night. Sweet dreams. Like and subscribe. Good morning to all your moms only. <laughs> only moms. Only moms. <laughs> 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 and on that note, <laughs> bye. Oh, oh, that wasn't the end. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>